my name is John Furick and thank you for watching. This video is coming to you from our home here in Concord, North Carolina. This video will present to beginner level piano students a basic understanding of music scales and the circle of fifths organization chart. High school and college entry level music students may also find this video useful. I consider that a beginner level piano student is new to the piano and new to music performance. I will help you become familiar with the keys on the piano and also you do not need to know how to read music either. I will help you get started with that too as we go along. For starters and for your assistance, I show on the screen a basic diagram tying together the white keys on the central section of the keyboard and their cor corresponding note placements on staff lines on a music sheet. I have three objectives for this video. First, it's designed to help you play better. Second, to improve your overall knowledge of music in general and music organization in particular by becoming familiar with scales. And third, to provide you with a good foundation to eventually learn chords and harmony. Except in one brief segment, this video will not cover chords and harmony. It would just take, it would just make the video way too long. I recall when I was first learning the piano at the age of 50, that's, that's five zero. <laughs> All the terms and concepts were so scattered and confusing. Since then, I have taken piano lessons and also taken college level music theory courses and music history courses, which I really enjoyed. I developed this video to possibly help in a small way, in a small way to bring some clarity to it all for the beginning piano student and music student. I ask you to stick with me as we have a lot to cover and as you will see, I do not take any shortcuts. The length, of, the length of this video will attest to that. Some concepts you may not understand at first, and that's okay, but it will all come together at the end. We'll start out looking at some basic definitions that you will need to know to help your understanding of our discussion of scales. And then we'll move to playing scales and explaining why they are so important. The obvious place to start is, what is a scale? Well, a music scale is to composition and songwriting what spelling and grammar is to writing. Music scales provide a functional framework to compose a song or music, musical composition and are the backbone of music creation. They are central to the formation of chords and harmonies, musical phrases, melodies, and a variety of musical creations. Knowing scales is essential to becoming a good musician. Technically, a music scale is a collection of eight keys in ascending order that are separated by a pattern of half step and whole step intervals. A scale can begin on a white key or a black key and the beginning note of a scale also repeats at the end. There are numerous music scale groups, but the two most prominent are the major scale group and the minor scale group. There are 15 major scales and 15 minor scales and the circle of fifths will help you 
will show them and help you understand them a lot better. Major and minor scales have been the foundation of music in the Western world for over 400 years. Every composer or songwriter during this time used or are using scales, either major or minor, as a music basis for their composition or song. Composers and songwriters from Johann Sebastian Bach to Taylor Swift use scales or used or are using scales in their composition and songwriting. A scale gives the musical piece its character. A word on terminology. Scales are often referred to as a key. A person or a band leader or someone might say, uh, let's play this song or musical piece in the key of E major or C minor. When they mean play it in the scale of E major or C minor. Uh, we will have much more major and minor scale groups later in this video. Our next term to define is the interval. An interval is the distance between two notes as designated by ordinal numbers, such as second, third, fourth, fifth, etc. An interval is a relative term. The interval distance depends on the starting or reference note and the interval note. The reference note and the interval note can be either a black or white key, and any key on the keyboard can be the reference note for an interval. An interval can start here, it can start here, it can start here, and it can start down here and down there. I'll give you an, uh, an instance uh, of for an interval. From C to E is considered a third interval, or what is commonly referred to as a third. First, second, third. An interval from C to G is considered a fifth interval, or what we would call a fifth. First, second, third, fourth, fifth. And an interval from A to A is considered an eighth interval, but that's more commonly referred to as an octave. Being familiar with intervals will also help you with your music note reading. Half-step interval is our next term. A half-step interval is the shortest interval on a keyboard. It is the adjacent note, white or black, left or right of the reference note. All adjacent keys on the keyboard are a half step apart. A half step interval is also known as a minor second. So if C is your reference note, that black key is a half step interval. If C is your reference note, B is a half step interval. The next term is whole step interval. Two halves equal a whole. So two half steps equal one whole step, left or right of the reference note. A whole step interval is also known as a major second. So if C is your reference note, D is a whole step interval. C 
So this black key is one half. On this black key to here is one half. Two halves equal whole. So the interval distance between C and D is a whole step. From D to E is a whole step. And from E to this black key is a whole step. From E to F is a half step. From here to here is a half step. From this black key to this black key is a whole step. From this black key to that black key is a whole step. And from this black key to the C is a whole step. The next term is a sharp note. A sharp note is the key a half step to the right of the reference note. Most often it will be a black key, but it can also be a white key. If the reference note is C, this black key is C sharp. If the reference note is F, this black key is F sharp. And if the reference note is A, then this black key is A sharp. The next term is flat note. A flat note is the key a half step to the left of the reference note. Again, most often it will be a black key, but it can also be a white key. If E is your reference note, this is E flat. If B is your reference note, this black key is B flat. Natural keys. The white keys are considered natural keys and they have letter names A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And we'll start, show these. This is A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. And then the pattern starts over again with the A. And that pattern is all across the keyboard. And while we're here, I'll mention that there are really only 12 distinct keys or should I say notes, on the keyboard. There are the seven white natural notes plus five black notes. And, and then the pattern starts over again. You'll see as we, uh, as we go along. Next term is a major scale. A major scale is a collection of eight notes separated by either half steps or whole steps using the following interval pattern. Whole step interval, whole step interval, half step interval, whole step interval, whole step interval, whole step interval, and half step interval. There are a total of 15 major scales, as I mentioned earlier, in the major scale group, and all 15 adhere to this interval pattern. The major scale can begin on a white or black key, and the beginning note of a major scale also repeats at the end. How many black or white keys there are in any given major scale depends on the starting note. The next term is minor scale. A minor scale is also a collection of eight notes separated by either half step or whole step intervals using the following interval pattern. Whole step interval, half step interval, whole step interval, whole step interval, half step interval, whole step interval, 
and hold step interval. As I mentioned, there are a total of 15 minor scales in the minor scale group, and all 15 adhere to this interval pattern. The minor scale can begin on a white or black note, and the beginning note of a minor scale also repeats at the end. How many black or white keys there are in any given minor scale depends on the starting note. And for your information only, I feel compelled to, to let you know that there are two variants to this minor scale pattern called the harmonic minor scale and the melodic minor scale. And again, I just mentioned this for your information only. You'll hear about this uh, as you progress with your st musical studies. But they will not be discussed any further here because they will just, uh, they're outside the scope of this video. What is the difference between a major and minor scale? Well, music written in a major scale is typically energetic, upbeat, and cheerful. Music such as Born to Run by Bruce Springsteen, Love Shack by the B-52s, they, both of those were written in a major scale. Music written in a minor scale is typically sad, melancholy, and somber. Music such as Hey Jude by the Beatles and Moonlight Sonata, First Movement by Beethoven were written in a minor scale. I want to try to show you the difference between a major sound and a minor sound. And this is very elementary, but it may show you. I'm going to play a major chord, and then I'm going to play its corresponding minor chord. And we'll start out playing C major, the C major triad chord. And this is uh, three notes. And by the way, just for your information, um, playing a chord is called harmony. Harmony is when you play two or more notes at the same time. So for the C major, well, the bass note will be C. <clears throat> the middle note will be E. And the upper note will be G. And this is C major. Now, to make a major chord into a minor chord, you move the middle note one half step to the left. So instead of playing E natural, we're going to be playing E flat. And that was C minor. So this is C major. And this is C minor. Let's do the same with the G major triad chord. And again, it's G, B, and D. And this is G major. I'm going to play it down here so you get a little better sound off of it. That was G major. Now we're going to play G minor, which is playing B flat instead of the natural B. This is, this is G minor. G major. G minor. Let me do one more. Let's play A major. 
A major has a sharp note in the middle. So it's A, C sharp, and E. This is A major. And to play A minor, you would play C natural. A major, A minor. Okay, the next definition is the tonic key. The tonic key is the first key of a major or minor scale, and it is the key that gives the scale its name. For instance, for the G major scale, the G key is the tonic key. The next term is the grand staff. The grand staff is made up of treble staff lines at the top and bass staff lines at the bottom. The treble and bass staves establish a reference and framework for notes on the music sheet. The next term is accidental. On a music sheet, an accidental is when either the sharp symbol is placed before a specific note to raise it by one half step, or the flat symbol is placed before a specific note to lower it by one half step. Accidentals are temporary note adjustments that apply only in the measure in which they appear, and we'll define that shortly. Accidentals are canceled by the next vertical bar line when you start a new measure. The next term that we'll look at is measure. Composers or songwriters will break their composition or song notation into measures. They are subunits of the larger musical piece. Measures are separated by vertical bar lines. On the screen, you should see a song, which we all know, called Happy Birthday. And you'll see notes on the page. And the notes are divided by vertical bar lines. And those, uh, those areas between the bar lines is called a measure. And uh, the, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven full measures. And the first and the last are partial measures. But the vertical bar line is the delineation line that cancels accidentals. So if any given measure had an accidental note, uh, that accidental goes away at, at once you pass that next bar line and go into the next measure. So uh, that's, that's what you need to know primarily about measures and, uh, and, and the vertical bar lines and the reason they're there. But actually dividing music into measures is done primarily for rhythmic pur purposes. But it also makes the music easier to follow. The next definition is key signature. All scales, major and minor, have a key signature. A key signature is an arrangement of sharp symbols or flat symbols that appear at the far left on a grand staff. The basis for a scale's key signature is the major scale pattern of intervals and also the minor scale pattern of intervals that we showed you a few minutes ago. There are no random notes in a key signature. 
key signatures are not subject to a composer's whim. They are based on established interval patterns for major scales and minor scales that do not change. And I'm going to put on the screen again the major scale pattern, which is whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. And I'll show you also the minor scale pattern, again, which is whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step. Major and minor scales can share a key signature and they are called relative scales. So a, relative, a pair of relative scales has the same key signature. That is why we have a total of 30 major and minor scales but only 15 key signatures because a major scale and a minor scale can share a single key signature. For instance, G major and E minor are relative scales because they both have one sharp note, which is F sharp. And let me show you by playing uh, first the G major scale. So this is G, and we'll play the major scale pattern. Start, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. And you can see we had one sharp note in the G major scale, which was F sharp. Now I'm going to play the E minor scale. And that has one sharp also, which is F. So this is E. And we're going to play the, the minor scale pattern now. So we'll start on E. Whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step. And you can see that also had one sharp note, which is the F. So both G major and E minor are relative scales because they share the same key signature, which is one sharp note, which is F sharp. Uh, let's do one more. Let's play uh, one that has uh, flat notes. And let's do a flat major and F minor. They're relative scales and they have four flat notes. So this is A and this is A flat. So we do whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. And it had four flat notes, B flat, E flat, A flat, and D flat. Now let's play its relative minor scale, which is F minor. So this is F. Whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step. And it also had four flat notes, which were B, E, A, and D. Now you may be wondering, how do you know what the, uh, how, do, how do you determine a minor scale and a major scale with the same key signature? How do you determine uh, relative scales? Well, the tonic note for a relative minor scale is found on the keyboard three half steps down 
or to the left of the tonic note of its relative major scale. So in our example of a few minutes ago, we showed G major and E minor are relative scales. And that was, this is G. And if we go down and to the left, three half steps. One, two, three. And that's the E key, and that's the relative minor scale. Uh, the other one was A flat major and F minor were relative scales. And here's uh, A flat, and we'll go down three half steps to the left. One, two, three, to F. So F is the uh, relative minor scale to A flat major. Now the C major scale and the A minor scale, which are relative scales by the way, will have blank key signatures because neither has any sharp or flat keys. And individual key signatures will indicate either sharp notes or flat notes, but never blend. You'll never see a key signature with, uh, let's say, three sharp notes and two flat notes. You just don't mix the two of them. They will either be all sharp notes or all flat notes. Now, whenever a, a note is written into a music piece, that has a sharp note or flat note specified in the key signature, that corresponding sharp or flat note will be played. The note in your music will look like a natural key, but the key signature requires you to play either a sharp note or a flat note instead. And this applies to the entire musical composition or song regardless of what line or space the sharp notes or flat notes were indicated in the key signature on the grand staff. Now I'm showing on the screen a musical piece by Johannes Brahms, which is his famous Brahms lullaby. And I marked it up uh, to for you to uh, reference. But first, you'll notice in the upper left-hand corner on the staff lines, there are three flat symbols. And the first, sim first, first flat symbol is on the line which indicates a B note. The second flat symbol is on a space that indicates an E note note, and the third flat symbol is on a space that indicates an A note. And as you go through the, look at the um, notes that are on the three uh, treble lines, wherever a B, an E, or an A are indicated, you have to play the, the flat note. Now, what makes this a little difficult at first is that they are shown as a natural note. So the first, and I have under each one, I have a flat symbol I penciled in there. And you can see the first one, the first B that's in the first full measure is you have to play a flat B, even though on the music sheet it shows it as a natural note. The key signature overrides the fact that it's a natural note and you have to play the flat note. The same as we go down a little uh, further to the third full measure, you'll see there's an E, and for that you have to play the flat E and not the natural E. And as you go through the piece uh, where I indicated 
you have you have to play the flat either B, E, or A. Now I want to uh, give you a little tip here to, um, and by the way, I have Brahms <laughs> piece right here I'm looking at. Uh, when you first look at the key signature and there's three flats, you don't automatically know what key or scale that the music piece is in. Because E flat major has three flat notes and C minor, its relative minor scale has three flat notes. So just by looking at the key signature you don't always know what scale the music has been written in. But there is a method that I'm thinking just about all musicians use and it's very, very reliable to help you determine what scale the music is in. And that is look at the last note on the third treble staff all the way on the right, you'll see a single note in that measure, and that note is E. And just about every musical piece ends on a tonic note. So what you can do is look at that last note, and in this case, it's E flat, and that will tell you what scale uh, the music has been written in. And it will either be a, a note by itself or it will be a note that is part of a chord. And uh, and that tells you, that's a very reliable way of finding uh, what scale the piece of music is written in. One other thing I wanted to, uh, I'm going to I'm going to put the Brahms lullaby back on the screen again, is that even though the flat notes in the key signature are on those three specific uh, line and two spaces, they apply to all throughout the, the piece, regardless of, of where in the piece a B note is shown, an E note is shown, or an A note is shown, you have to play the flat note. So don't think that the flat uh, just applies to those three, uh, uh, that line and two spaces. It applies throughout the whole music piece all across the keyboard. Now key signatures are are like a form of a shortcut. You can think of it that way. If you didn't did not have key signatures, you would have accidental, in this case a Brahms lullaby, you would have accidental flat notes all throughout the piece, which kind of uh, clutters up the, the music piece. Now you're going to think, well, it's, how do I, how will I remember those three notes all the time? And Plus, I mean, you're trying to read the music and figure out what key to hit, and it does, it does take some work. But let me give you a tip, and I can't, cannot stress this enough, and this is one even the, the virtuosos that play today, they play that scale before they practice that music piece. So... In this case, the, the E flat major scale, I would recommend that you play that five times before you begin to play Brahms Lullaby. And that will get you acclimated to playing uh, B flat, E flat, and A flat. It's, uh, I can't stress that enough, to play the scale before you play the music piece. And uh, it also will help your ear training, which I will show you uh, shortly here in this video. 
Now, I'm going to change the uh, camera angle and, uh, and we'll show you how to play numerous key signatures where you have a better view of the uh, keyboard. And we'll do that right now. Well, as you can see, we moved the camera closer to get a better view of the keyboard as in this segment we will be playing uh, various major and minor scales. So let's get started uh, using the major scale pattern starting with the C. So C is our tonic note and we do a whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. And C major has no sharp or, or flat keys. They're all white keys. And let's do a, a minor uh, scale pattern starting with the A. And this is A minor which is the relative key to C major, and it also is all white keys. So this is A, and we'll apply the minor scale pattern. So A is the tonic, start, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step. Start on the A, end on the A, and they're all white keys. Now, before we go any further, I know some of you may be uh, learning the piano on your own, and you don't have an instructor to help you play a scale. Uh, I know everybody tells you how uh, that you should play them, but you may not know how, and that's why I want to take a few minutes here to show you how I play my scales. And uh, we'll go back to the C and play the C major again. And when I start, if, if the scale that I'm playing, if the tonic key is a white key, then I start with my thumb. So we'll put the thumb on the C and I play three notes. And at that point, I pivot, I pivot my hand and play the fourth note, which is the F, with my thumb again. And I pivot again. And by pivot, and this is a hard angle to show you, but basically, you want to bring your thumb under your hand like that. And this will play the first note and the fourth note. Now this only applies if you start on the white key. So let's try that again. I know it's hard for you to see, but... And then pivot with the thumb. And then continue to play the remainder of the scale. And then pivot again and finish on the C. Start on the C, end on the C, and come back. Now I want to show you when you when you pivot, uh, and I'll move my hand up here so I get a little better angle, but when you're playing it's okay to turn your arm like that to play that fourth note. And then once your thumb is on there, then you can swing your arm back again. And if you have to lean to the right, that's okay too. You can, you can lean to get your arm at a better angle. So, uh, so let's play that again. When you, when 
when you do that, just uh, just take your time. Speed will speed will come later. Just uh, you just want to make sure you got the technique first and take it slow, and uh, you you'll get faster. You'll get faster with it. And let's play the A minor scale that I just showed you. And again, this is all white keys. And we'll play that because uh, we'll start with the thumb. We'll just have one pivot. Okay, now we'll do a, a, a first scale, which is G major. And this is G. And G major has one sharp note. And that sharp note is F. So G is our tonic note. And we'll start like this. And then we'll do a whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. And that is the G major scale. It has one sharp note. So if you're looking at a piece of music and uh, there's one sharp in the key signature in the upper left-hand corner of your music sheet, uh, it will be an F. And by the way, I want to tell you, if, if you um, these key signatures don't change. Uh, when you play a G major has one sharp note and it's always an F. I'm embarrassed to tell you that when I first started playing the piano, I didn't realize that. And when I got some piece of music that might have uh, two sharps or three sharps or whatever, uh, I didn't know that they would always be the same notes. So if you get a piece of music with one sharp, uh, it's what it, it's an F sharp. It's nothing, can't be anything else. You'll never see a key signature with one sharp note that's a, a D or a G or anything. If there's one sharp in the key signature, it's always an F. Okay, let's, uh, let's play another major scale and we'll play the A major. And A major has three sharp notes and they are F, C and G. So this is A, and that's our tonic note. So we'll do whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. So you start on the A, you end on the A, and there were three uh, sharp notes, the F, the C, and the G. So let's play A major. And again, if you see a key signature with three sharp notes, they will always be the F, the C, and the G. They won't, they won't ever be mixed up or any other uh, notes. If there's three sharps in the key signature, they're always F, C, and G. Okay, let's play uh, a scale with some flat notes. And let's play E flat. And this is the E, and this is E flat. And E flat is our tonic key. So that will start. And let me back up a minute. E flat has three flat notes. B, E, and A. So we'll start, we'll start down here. So this is E flat. So, whole step, 
whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Start on E flat, end on E flat. And there's three flats notes in E flat major. So let's play that. And because it starts on a black key, I'm going to start with my forefinger. And it's much easier. But when you start with your forefinger, you're going to have two pivot points with your thumb. And I'll show you. And this is the first pivot. Second pivot. And as you can see, I only used three fingers, my thumb and two fingers to play. I didn't use the fourth and fifth finger. Okay, let's start playing some minor scales. And the first minor scale that we're going to play is E minor. And this is the E, and we'll play using the minor scale pattern. So E is your tonic note. And I should mention that E has one sharp note, and that's the F. So we'll start. Whole step. Half step, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step. Start on the E, end on the E. And let's, uh, <clears throat> let's play that. And because it starts on a white key, I'll start with my thumb. has one sharp note, the F. Now, if you recall, G major has had one sharp note, too. And uh, E minor and G major are relative scales because they share a key signature of one sharp note, F sharp. Now, let's play our second minor scale which is F sharp minor and F sharp minor has three sharp notes and they are the F, the C and the G. So this is F and this is F sharp and actually I'm going to uh, start down here. This is the F F sharp and let's let's apply our minor scale pattern to the F sharps minor scale which has three sharp notes F C and G so we'll start F sharp is our tonic key whole step half step whole step whole step half step whole step, whole step. And you start on the F sharp and you end on the F sharp. And it had three sharp notes, which were F, C, and G. So let's go ahead and play that. And because I'm starting on a black key, I'm gonna start with my forefinger. see I had to pivot twice and uh, and that's that's how you play the F sharp minor and by the way a minor if you recall from a few minutes ago had three sharp notes so a major and F sharp minor are relative keys
because they share the same key signature of three sharp notes, F, C, and G. Okay, now we'll play our third minor scale, and this one will be C minor. And you recall C major has no sharps or flats, it's all white keys, but C minor has three flat keys, and they are B, E, and A. So this is C, and we'll apply the minor scale pattern uh, starting at the C. So this start, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step. Start on the C, end on the C. And let's, uh, let's play the C minor scale. And we're starting on a white key, so I'll start with my thumb. And it had three flat notes, B, E, and A. And if you recall from a few minutes ago, E flat major also had three flat notes. So E flat major and C minor share a key signature of three flat notes, B, E, and A, and they are considered relative scales. And to pick up uh, from a few the discussion a few minutes ago, uh, let's let's think about E flat major and C minor that has three flat notes. If you uh, open your piece of music and you see uh, three flat notes in the key signature, they will always be B flat, E flat, and A flat. They don't change. If there's three flat notes in the key signature, they'll always be B, E, and A. And when you view the uh, Circle of Fists video that uh, I would like for you to view, uh, these uh, patterns of uh, key signatures uh, will be sh shown in much more detail. Now, good pianists practice playing scales on a regular basis. Playing the scales related to the music piece you are learning is strongly recommended. Doing this will enhance your practice session for that particular piece that you're learning and will actually reduce the amount of time that it takes you to learn that music piece. And that is true. Now I want to do a little exercise here for you to show you why scales are important. And what I'm going to play is the D major scale it has two sharp notes, uh, F and C. And I'm going to play it uh, five times. And you'll get used to listening to it. And then I'm going to play it one time with, the, with a wrong note. And uh, your ear should tell you that I played the wrong note. But let's get started. play one more time. Now I'm going to play it with the wrong note. I'm 
going to ask you to look to look away from the screen while I play this uh, one more time with the wrong note. And I want you to see if your ear can tell you I'm playing the wrong note. So please look away. <laughs> Okay, you can look back and you can, you should have heard that I played a wrong note when I was coming back down the scale and actually I played F natural when I should have played F sharp. Well, if you, if you practice your scales before you play the piece that you, music piece that you are learning your ear will get attuned to the notes and what the notes sound like so that if you do play a wrong note while you're practicing your music piece, you'll know it. You'll know it. You, you'll just know that, that you played something wrong. Sometimes you don't always know what it was, but you know something didn't sound right. But you wouldn't necessarily know that if you had not practiced the scales ahead of time. If you forget the scale pattern, you can recall it on the keyboard. For the major scale, starting on this C key, look at the interval spacing of the white keys going to the right and ending on the next C. So if you start on a C, C, C is your tonic note. It's a whole step to the next white key. A whole step to the next white key. A half step to the next white key. A whole step to the next white key. A whole step to the next white key. A whole step to the next white key. The next white key. And then a half step to the next white key and you end on the C. And, th and that's your major scale pattern. Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. The same applies for the minor scale pattern if you start on the A and just look at the interval pattern for the white keys starting on the A and ending on the A. Let's take a look. So A is your tonic note. A whole step to the next white key. A half step to the next white key. A whole step to the next white key. A whole step to the next white key. A half step to the next white key. A whole step to the next white key and a whole step to the next white key. And that's the minor scale pattern. Whole, half, whole, whole, half, whole, whole.